Hey, what's going on, everybody? If you are here, give us a hello in the chat on the on the side of the video. But it's great. Looks like we already got a handful of people in here. So um, this is Chris from AppSumo. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. There we go. We got Nicholas, Sheldon, Neil, Steve, Todd. Sweet. Um, I am here today with Andy and Nicole from Dropler. Uh, Dropler is a screencasting, file sharing, screenshotting tool that, that helps you securely share your projects with your team and get instant feedback. Right now, you can snag Dropler in the AppSumo store. It's just $39 for lifetime access down from the annual price of $359. Um, so you can see me, Andy, Nicole right now. I'm going to turn off my screen in a second, and they're going to take you through a demo and a walkthrough of Dropler. If at any point you guys have questions about the tool, feel free to use the questions box underneath the video. Um, that is where we'll be going through and answering all of your questions. And then uh, at the end of the walkthrough, I'll come back on, ask some of those questions, get you guys answers. And if you have to peel out for any reason, we'll be sending out a replay at the end of the day. So you can also catch up on anything you missed as well. So Andy and Nicole, I will turn it over to you. You guys can start doing that demo and share people, share with people what's going on. Sounds good. So we will start by sharing our screen and we'll do a little walkthrough on how to log in. Um, we will share with you guys the desktop uh, Mac application and then we'll walk through the Chrome extension and then we'll walk through our web dashboard as well. So just a general overview on some basics about Dropler and then um, we'll go through questions from there. Cool, yeah, and we'll also be operating uh on here with our, we are on a Mac right now. Uh, we do have a Windows app as well. Um, and as Nicole said, the Chrome extension. And uh, yeah, so I'll just go ahead and share my screen. So there we go, there's that craziness going on. Um, you just log in by going over to dropper.com and then you'll be prompted uh, up in the right top corner to log in. Um, you can sign up through Google, your Facebook, uh, you could have SSO as well. Um, once you log in, you're essentially directed to your Dropler dashboard. And this is just essentially a rolling history of all of the content you've created. And that content, or what we are calling drops, um, are screenshots, annotated screenshots, uh, any kind of file that you've uploaded into it, um, screencasts, and we'll kind of walk through all those. Um, but that's kind of where you would be, you'd be able to view all this. Um, you can see that you're logged in, you can edit your team, but, uh, yeah, I guess we can just start by going yeah. through the first first little part of. Yeah, so we're just going to provide some general examples on how we use Dropler. And so we'll just go to the AppSumo website to start. Um, you can literally take screenshots and do anything um, with the app on any uh, website, your computer. I will start with the desktop application. So as soon as you download it, you go to Dropler. Um, most of you probably already have the app downloaded. If not, you can... Um, go to our website and get it there. Um, the icon sits right up here, and you can either drag files to it. Let me get this out of the way. So we've got some files on our desktop. Maybe we want to declutter it. Um, I don't want this here, so I'm going to just drag it to the Dropler icon. What that's going to do is it's going to drop it in there, and it'll create a short link so that you can share it. And we can go back to Slack and we can paste that link and that link will populate a screenshot. So you can share it through Slack, you can share it in email, any way you want. If you just want it in your dashboard like we showed you before through here, it'll also pull up here once we refresh that as well. So pretty basic uh, feature of Dropler um, and that's how you drag a file. You can drag a whole folder of files, you can drag whatever type of file you want. Um, if you want to just capture a screenshot, we'll just click on the drop and we're going to select screenshot here and it's going to come up with these crosshairs and I can literally draw on my screen wherever I want to take an image of and you'll hear that noise and once you hear that, you know it's uploaded. So you can go ahead and share just a plain screenshot or if you'd like to annotate that, that's our next feature. So the next one down is screenshot with annotation. Maybe I want to just, you know, annotate this part. Something's wrong on the website. I want to share this with someone. 
and point out. Maybe I don't want this word to be here. I want to blur out some information. Um, I want someone to draw attention here. We also have a bunch of lines, rectangles, anything you want. So maybe I want to circle something or put an emoji, whatever you want. So as soon as you're done annotating that screenshot, you can either um, drag it and save it to your desktop directly, or you can download it. And then if you want it to go into the cloud, you'll select this save and copy URL, and it'll go right into um, the cloud again. So you can paste that in a new browser, and you can share these links with anybody. Um, and I'll have Andy walk through maybe a little bit about the drop page itself. Yeah, totally. So what you'll see right here is what you will see as the user. Um, if I go into an incognito mode, you'll be able to see that what they will see is this. Um, but there is a bunch of things you can get as granular as you want and edit uh, what you what kind of data retention settings. If you just hit this little sidebar over here, um, you can add the dropper watermark so you can remove the powered by dropper down here. Uh, you can give them a clone permission or a download permission if you don't want to download it or a clone. Um, you can do that. But you can also edit all of these things so you can further annotate it. You can add it to a board, which we'll go to in a little bit. Um, you can add tags. Um, right here is those data retention settings that I was mentioning. You can keep it forever. Uh, you can do it six months. Also, with your team, you can set a parameter to be everyone's drops that they create will either be you know, three months or whatever you want. Um, you can make the drop privacy team only, public, private. So private is just essentially it will add a password. Um, and then you can either generate or you can create it yourself, submit it, that kind of scenario. Um, and then with team only, essentially what that will do is just make sure that no password is required. If someone logs into, uh, I'm sorry, if someone receives the drop link, uh, they will not be able to view it unless they're logged into your account. Um, and then this is just uh, copying the, the link itself. Um, you can also see how many people have viewed it. The stats down here, you can see tags you associated or boards it's add to, um, as well as the file details. So. That's kind of what you're able to see on that end. Um, and then I guess we could just move on to the screencast portion. Yep. Um, yeah. So the next feature we'll go over is the fourth one down here, um, which is screen recording. And you have two options with this. You can do an HD video, which includes audio, or you can just do a GIF. So that's just a replay of whatever you're recording over and over again. Um, so I'll just show HD video. And what's nice about this is you can move it around your screen. Maybe I don't want to show all this top information if I just want the website. So I'm going to drag and you have these options down here as well. So you can have it preset. You can, you know, have it have a delayed timer. We don't have a delayed timer here, but maybe I want it to start five seconds after it's going. Um, and then you have your microphone settings as well. So once once I push record, it's recording and you can tell up here because this will have a stop button and you can literally do whatever you want, switch browsers. It's recording my audio. So as soon as I'm ready to be done recording, I'll go ahead and hit this stop button. And that will take a second to upload. And as soon as that's done, I'll have a quick screencast. And this is really great to use with uh, training materials. Let's say you want to record this webinar. You could take Dropler and just record your screen, and it will, um, yeah, it, it's just an easy way to share in a new browser. Did it upload? I'm not sure. We're not sure if that one uploaded. Let's see. No, nope, that one didn't upload. We'll try it again with the GIF. Sometimes when we do webinars, weird things happen with our screencast, so I apologize about that. So we'll just take a quick GIF here so we can show you guys what that looks like. Hmm. Yeah, this typically happens when we're <laughs> sharing our screen. It's some weird. Oh, there it goes. So as you can see, it just uploaded. I'll paste that into a new link. And as you can see there, there is my GIF. So that one doesn't have audio, but 
it's a really, really quick way to show something on your screen. We like to show um, bug reports to our development team. They will not take any um, bugs if we, we can't show them visually what that looks like. So this is a great way to um, do training videos, to share bug reports, even just to walk a customer and support um, through a process. If someone doesn't know where to go on their website, you can just show them with your screen in under 30 seconds. So it's a great feature to have. Uh, and then we have these other features here. We have some plugins, and then you can do shortened links. If you'd like to do code snippets, we have a couple extra features there. So those are all of our little um, tools on the Mac dropdown app. And then what this is down here is it, it's like 10 of your last drops that you can see. And this little bubble over here where it says one, three, that's, amount, that's the amount of views of those drops. So you can just take a glance and see who's viewed those. And as you can see, I'm hovering over this and these things are appearing. You can grab the link directly. If you want to annotate a drop, maybe you took a screenshot and you want to go back and annotate it, you'd select this button. If you want to just grab the screenshot, maybe drag it to your desktop or Slack anywhere, um, you can do that. And then if you want to delete that drop, you would just check this X mark as well. And this is also a really great way to go to your dashboard down here. If you click on view all drops, that'll go right to your history. And we can go over this in a second as well. We'll go through the Chrome extension next, but this is essentially how you can get to your dashboard quickly. So that's kind of a summary of the Mac app. Do you have anything else that you want to go through with this? No, not, not at the moment, but I did see um, you, unfortunately, I'm looking at the chat real quick. Uh, you unfortunately cannot annotate a video. Um, the annotation is purely just for screen capture, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, recording with audio. Definitely, you can do that. So you can record with the audio. And then something I'll show you in a little bit is our uh, Chrome extension, where you can actually show your show your face as well. So yep. we've included a webcam. And the length of videos that you can record, we typically suggest to do five to ten minute videos. If you have um, great, reliable internet connection, then you can record upwards of like an hour or so. But there is a chance that if your internet connection cuts out at all, it might fail at upload. So we, we hate to see people who record really long um, screencasts and then lose them. But you can test it out, see what works for you. Um, I typically record like one to two minute videos. Uh, but yeah, you, you can basically record as long as you'd like. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, yeah, I guess we could just move over. I'm just going to double check really quick. I hear that we are not having some sound issues. I just want to make sure that we're not muted. OK. So we have some sound up elsewhere. Sorry about that. Yeah, some of you guys have sound, it looks like. Some don't. Sound is fine. OK, thanks, Thank for, the, thanks for the feedback. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I guess next thing we'll move into is our Chrome extension. We can kind of show you, um, or should we touch boards first? We can do that. Yeah, sure. we can we can, we can touch on boards. So boards essentially um, is a is a feature that we came up with that will essentially allow you to transfer a large amount of drops as opposed to just one. Um, and you can see that down here is this area right here. And what it look like is essentially we use it for an onboarding scenario or overview or training, and uh, you would just be able to copy the link and you are able to send a collection or a board of different drops. Uh, it's really helpful for presentations, um, for, like I said, onboarding. And then um, I guess you walk through how to create it and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So the way you want to create a board is you just select here, and this will pop up, and we'll just type in webinar. And this one's password protected, but if I want this to be a public board, I'll select this, which means anyone I share the link with will be able to view. And then if I want anyone to be able to contribute to the board, even if they don't have Dropler, I'm going to toggle this public upload on. This is a feature that we just added. Um, it's really popular, and a lot of a lot of people are be able to share files directly to the board without having Dropler as well. So you want to make sure that that's on. And if you have a large team, if you want anyone on your team to be able to collaborate with you, you're going to select this. And then all the users on your team will pop up. It's loading a little bit slow. This usually happens with webinars as well. 
Um, and then you'll just select um, whoever you want to be able to contribute to that board. If you want them to just view it, you can select that. And then if you click here, yep, we can have them edit it as well. Sorry about this, guys. I'm clicking too much. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to create the board. There we go. Yeah, so I apologize for the delay. Hmm. We'll give it five more seconds. Yeah. Hmm. All right, I'm going to exit out of this and just, oh, and it's oh created. <laughs> it just got created. I got impatient. All right, so it should, yep, it appeared at the bottom here. And if you guys want to organize your boards, you can drag and drop. So some people were asking me in support the other day if they can alphabetize these, but this is the only way right now we can organize them. So you can just drag and literally do this. So um, if you can see here, there's a long list of boards. So it's really nice to be able to drag and put your most important ones at the top if you'd like. Um, so this is a blank board. We just created this. You can see these are the people that have access to this board within the team. You can grab the link to copy um, and share it externally. And then you can go back and edit all those preferences. So let's say if you want to add a couple more team mem members, you want to remove people, you would just select there and it would take you back to that screen. So we'll go ahead and grab the link. We'll open it up in a new tab. You'll see it's a lot longer than a normal dropler link. You'll know that that means it's a board. And this is what um, this is what you see. So anyone can drop drop a file into this. So I'll go back here. I can just drag directly from the desktop. I can upload it through here um, any way you want. And you'll see it'll upload the file there. It'll populate in there. Um, so nice, easy way for people to contribute to that. And then you'll go back here. If you just refresh the page, it'll appear in your account. So this can be shared um, with anyone across the board. If you make it private, you you only have access to it. So you can have boards just for yourself. Or you can have boards externally as well. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's a cool way to kind of communicate with your client in real time, essentially. So you mm -hmm. can edit things, you can have them edit things and then give you approval or kind of move forward like that. So yeah. Um, you're also able to just one quick thing. You're also able to edit uh, the order in which this comes in. So you can have a descending, ascending, or one of my, uh, yeah. And you can have it in size, title, when it was viewed, all that kind of stuff. So wait, I'm actually not even in the thing. Here, I'll just go to this one. Um, yeah, you'd be able to see it here. Um, a cool way to, if you're doing it for a presentation, like I mentioned, you can also do custom. So you can kind of order it just to make it a very linear path for the person. Oh, this requires a password. Um, these are all private. I should have selected a different one. But uh, but yeah, so it's a great way for a presentation like that. Yeah, and if you want to edit things as well, straight from your dashboard, you don't have to necessarily go to the specific drop. Let's say I want to change the title of this one. I'll just double click on it. And if you hover here, you can see that that drop hasn't been viewed by anyone yet. Um, you can also select in the corner here. Um, and you can do all these things with it. So maybe you want to put a self-destruction on it. You want it to delete in an hour or um, you want to make this private. You can select one drop and select multiple drops. We have a couple people ask if you can do bulk delete. And this is this is how you would do it. So you would just select as many as you want. Your, um, an easier way to view your drops. Some people like this view as well. So that's kind of an overview of our dashboard. We also have this viewed items. So any drop that was shared with you from anyone else, that whatever you viewed, it will appear here. So not only your drops will view if you viewed them, but anyone else's drops. So yeah, yeah. it's an easy way to, I think we all are familiar with the, the problem where you send off a screenshot, uh, you need to revisit it and you can't find it anymore. So we came up with viewed items to kind of solve that problem. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess so we can move on to the Chrome extension now. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I guess I'll start off with that. Uh, it's pretty, it'll live up here right here in this little toolbar. Um, 
essentially will have the same kind of uh, functions as the Chrome extension, except there are a couple cool things that I mentioned, uh, the face cam, the webcam um, recording. But essentially what you would do to do this would be to, if I was gonna capture and annotate, can select an area um, and you're familiar with that, it'll come up and you can edit it just like you would on the Mac app or the Windows app. Um, but the one thing that makes it a bit different is you are able to navigate over here to your screencast portion. Um, and you can select current tab. If you select current tab, I'll do some microphone audio. You're able to see us right here. Yep. And you can make this a little bit larger if you want your face bigger yeah. in here as well. Yeah. It's a cool way for, to add a personal touch to your training or anything like that, or customer support. Um, People are seeming to uh, dig it so far. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Another feature of the Chrome extension that's a little bit different. If you go to a web page and you'd like to take a screenshot of the entire page, maybe you want, you know, more than what you see. The Chrome extension also has this full entire page screenshot, so it's going to take a rolling screenshot of the web page. Every time I touch it, it seems to not want to work. So I apologize about this. Um, but it'll take a rolling screenshot. You can edit it. You can mock it up, whatever you want to do. Um, you can also see if I can just exit out of this. Now we can't share. Hmm. All right. Well, that feature does work, I promise. <laughs> Um, do you want to move on to anything else then if we can't use the Chrome extension right now? Yeah. Um, should that be, I'd like to take some questions if we're able to. Um, yeah. I think that's pretty much, do you think we miss anything? I don't think so. Um, um, I guess we could go into a couple of like settings features real quick. Um, if you guys you wanna... want to invite team members, you can quickly access this here. If you go to just d.pr, it'll go to your profile and you have all these different settings. So if you'd like to change your name, even your email address, you can do that right there. Um, you can change and update your password here. Um, and then you can change your global settings on your drops. So right now, everyone should have their drops set to keep forever. But if you don't like your drops saved for eternity, you can change this to set out to six months, three months, one day, one hour, whatever you'd like. Um, if you'd like to have your users on your team have that control for themselves, you can select this. And each user on your team will be able to set those settings for themselves. So you can do that. And then same with the privacy. Um, public just means the drop is a little bit shorter. Um, and if you set a private uh, password on it, it will require a password if you share the drop externally. And Andy went over this already, but if you try to share a drop outside of your organization, um, no one will be able to view it if you set it to team only. So those are some settings right there that you have control of. Um, this team tab, you can change your team name, your email domain, this is where you would set up your custom branding. Um, so all that lives here. If you want to update a logo instead of the Dropler logo, um, you can do that here. And then we have two different drop themes. So you can do dark or light right there. So just general features. And then this is where um, you would also invite users on your team and where you can see um, the users on your team have their how many drops they've created, space used. You won't be able to see their drops. Um, but you'll be able to see um, how many drops they've created, the space they've used, um, if you've disabled them. So all that information lives here. I know a lot of people ask about that question as well. And then your billing information, and then we have a referral program as well. So are there any questions you want to start answering? Um, you guys got them? You want me to ask them, feed them to you? Or do you, get, you want to go through? All right. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, thanks for doing that walkthrough. That was awesome. You can go ahead people and got, got a lot out of that. So for the for the first question, Todd asks about the uh, 
it seems like the Mac apps have more features than the, the Windows. Is there a difference between what you get depending on what platform you're using? Yeah, so the Windows app is a little bit behind compared to the Mac app. Um, our Windows app still um, requires a full screen uh, screencast. We are not able to do like a partial screen recording yet with the Ma uh, Windows application. But other than that, um, I would say most of the features are. Neil says, uh, after annotating an image and saving it, can you return to the same image later and change the previously made annotations? I don't believe so. Not you can't change the previous annotations. Kind of once once you create all the annotations, they are permanent in the new drop that was created. Um, so you would have to access the previous uh, page or whatever you were taking a screenshot right. of. Let's see. This is a this is a lengthy one. Let's see if we can sort through this. So uh, from the FAQ, we can read this. Pro plan can use up to 20 gigabytes per day, but not more than 50 gigabytes per day per team. Every next user in team above five gets 50 gigabytes more bandwidth to your monthly bandwidth limit. For example, teams with six members will get 100, band, 100 gigabytes bandwidth per month. So you, can you confirm if I'm understanding this right? For five codes, you get 50 users, but we get 2,300 gigabyte bandwidth per month for the team. Are you guys seeing this question? It's probably easier to, to read it for you guys than for me to read it to you. Um, if we want to parse through that a yeah. bit. Yeah, so this is kind of a, a common question that has been popping up uh, recently, and apologize for not going over it more clearly. Um, but each account should essentially have 500 gigabytes per of bandwidth per month, um, and this is each account. Mm -hmm. um, now, the difference in li like that lies within the stacked uh, five codes versus just a single code is obviously the amount of users but all the users will still have that amount of bandwidth. Um, but what will change is unlimited storage, right? So one terabyte for for uh, the one code and then unlimited for the five codes is essentially what it should be. And if I'm correct, I believe yeah, I'm right. that's what we that's what we know um, is what's available on the accounts. Um, yeah, that's what was told to us. So I we're pretty sure and confident that that's the correct answer. <laughs> yeah, and not to give like too general of an answer on on, on the next thing I'm gonna say, but we have not had anyone kind of touch that limit. Uh, so we would also, if it did happen with your account, um, I have confirmed that we are able to kind of be lenient and just kind of figure out a situation that'll work for, for whomever it, it may be. Um, at, I believe no extra charge, but uh, again, it is kind of specific to each scenario. Um, with a, with a yeah, lot of that's these as products, far as we uh, don't, yeah. 95% of that's people it. are never going to get even <laughs> close to those limits. But uh, yeah, glad we got glad we got an answer for that one. Right. What's right. That? Yeah, if, if anyone got close, yeah, if anyone got close to those limits, we would let them know um, and we would have like, yeah, we would reach out to them and um, have a discussion then, but people should generally not really worry about storage limits. Um, right. Or Next one. for that matter. Can we record our screenshot with webcam with Chrome extension? Can we move around the webcam too? So that doesn't hide something while recording. Uh, uh, right now it's just in the bottom left hand corner. We can't move that around. Um, we're working on being able to add that to um, like the Mac app or a different application. But right now it's just for a one tab of a browser. So you have to stay on the same um, web page if you're using it. Um, but yeah, we're, we're working on it, advancing that as well. But it's been a feature request that's been asked quite a bit and we, we finally have it, but it is very, very basic um, currently. Yeah, but we're super excited about it. So awesome. yeah, we're working pretty hard uh, on it. Next up, is there a way to use steps. our custom branding to the password page for protected boards? Um, 
Yeah. Is, is there a way to use you, custom you, branding to the you password? That question, sorry. This seems like similar a to a, a different unrelated WordPress tool that we've been we're, we have coming up. So I'm not quite sure what that question is. I'm going to assume the answer is no. <laughs> um, yeah, unless you guys have any anything further for that. But I imagine it's a standard login page. Yeah, so like putting a password Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure exactly what that question is, but boards are je like if it's if it's private, it's pass. It's basically protected. No one's gonna guess these characters. So as long as it's private um, and you're not sharing it, then it'll stay private. Well, um, uh, if if the person uh, who wrote that question wants the to question. rephrase it, we can we can take uh, another stab at it. Uh, Todd asks. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You, right. you are also able to select. Uh, password protect the board like as a whole if that is helpful so this will only be accessible if you have the password so that was a pretty common feature request of uh password protecting All right. so um maybe that helps maybe it doesn't sorry uploading an image to a board does not put it in the board it just goes to the images i guess that's more of a, a statement from trying it or okay yeah yeah we didn't really go over that, but if you want to take a screenshot, it won't go directly into like this board maybe. So it'll go right into your items and you can um, select that and just add it to a board um, or you can just drag it too. Yeah. So you can just drag that right into there. Um, you can also do that on the drop page itself. So once you've created that screenshot, in this side panel here, um, like Andy was showing, if you select this, you can add to a board and all your boards will come up here. And so I can add it that way. And if you want to create a new board, you can also do it there. Yeah. So there's, there's kind of a couple of different ways to add to boards and do all the same things on the, the drop page as you do in your dashboard. The client so defined as a user. Oh, is that what they're asking in terms of uh, maybe maybe the way oh, for, really put up in terms of the like if you of share users a you link have. with somebody? Mm -hmm. um, typically, clients aren't considered users is unless they are added to your team. Um, so if you if you want to share a dropler with them, then and they are your client, you can have them on your team, mm -hmm. but. No, you, like anyone you share a Dropler link with, they don't have to be a user with Dropler and they're not considered. Philippe asks about bandwidth limits, um, wants to know if the bandwidth limit is shared across all of the users or if it can be combined. Um, yeah. Um, I don't believe that they can be combined. Um, I think it is specific to just one user, the 500 mm -hmm. gigabytes bandwidth per uh, user. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah. Yep, each user has their own account, typically. Uh, we can, however, though, if, if the user wants to be, um, if you do want to disable or remove a user for any reason, we can merge their drops Onto All right. Any account uh, Jonathan this. asks, do you have plans to add screen capture and screen recording for mobile phones? Um, uh, that may be on our roadmap. I don't believe that I have heard any mm -hmm. anything about that recently. Um, but what's cool about us is that we are a relatively small team. So if we see a lot of buzz around something, a feature request, um, then th with, that is definitely something we could direct our attention towards. Yeah. Um, and if you do have like a video on your phone that you want to share with Dropler, we do have a iOS app that you can upload pictures with, um, but you can also log into your phone on a, br on a browser, any browser on your phone, and you can upload a video through your browser instead of the app. Um, it's not like the easiest way that most people would know how to do that, but you can, you can upload any files or content through your phone. If you have that video there, you can just okay. um, upload it 
through the browser on um, your phone. We got a couple questions about the the dropler branding or white labeling or watermarks and things like that. Do you guys just want to touch on what that looks like with the uh, the current deal, where there will be branding, where they can put their branding, things like that? Yeah. yeah, totally. Um, so I know that people were having issues with uh, the Powered By logo, if you can see. Um, let me just open this up. Right down here. Um, so what you can I think that's do what that is... that question we were stumped on was referring to. Uh, they wrote back about um, the, the Dropler branding on the password page. Yeah. They said, um, for the protected boards, even if I'm using my custom branding, is there a way to show my branding on the page where the password is entered to be consistent with my branding? Oh, on board. Oh. I'm not sure on boards if that's available yet. I can check with our team. Um, if you want to get me that person's um, information, I can get back with them and give them the, um, an answer on whether or not boards is okay. changeable with the dropler watermarks. Um, on general drop, it can be your logo mm -hmm. and whatnot, but I'm, I'm not sure about Good. shared boards. Yeah, and just so just to go over what I changed right there. Um, so I just went over here to and hit dropler watermark on that sidebar. Um, and essentially what changed was if I go to my incognito window right now and refresh, I mean, I already did it, but it would be the powered by uh, dropler is removed. Um, I know people were asking about the tri dropler being removed. Uh, we are, I guess, discussing this right now, but, um, as of right now, we're, we're not removing it. Um, but I am not sure in the next, uh, you know, foreseeable future, I'm not sure, but, uh, but yeah. How about there an Android app? As well. Do you have plans for that? I think that probably goes with your other answer about mobile. Yeah, we, we hope to have one. We hope to have one down the road. We don't have one in development yet. Um, we used to have one, um, but it, it wasn't as functional as we'd liked it to be. But again, you can log in to Dropler via any browser on your phone and still be able to access it. Um, most people are used to just using apps in general, so people just ask about the app. But you can still get into Dropler um, through any browser on your phone. Right, we got a, this is kind of an inverse of the last watermark question. They want to know if they could put their own company logo on all of the, I guess, screenshots and things like that that they took. Yeah. So in your settings, See, we have so many windows open now. I know. Sorry. That's okay. So, um, yeah, under was it team? Yeah, it was. Uh, so, if you go all the way down here, right now it's the Dropler logo. So it'll default to that if you have no logo here. But if you upload a logo, your own logo will appear in this top left-hand corner awesome. on all drops, and our Dropler logo will disappear. Yeah. Yeah, you can also change the uh, how the URL will appear as well. I believe that's in the same area yep. right here. Um, root direct uh, and custom links. Um, so you can change that as well to go to your website as well as to look more uh, streamlined to. I haven't seen that you're, before. Yep, you're Very nice. Branding. All right, dude asks having issues with embedding drops. Can you show yeah. an example of that? Um, currently we don't have an easy way to embed drops. I know you can have like an embedded link with a dropler link, but we don't have a way to just like grab an embedded drop link. So I can't show that as easily. Do you have an easy way to do that? No, I don't unfortunately, but I was talking about this, uh, with our CEO yesterday and, um, we are looking at getting this reintegrated back into our application. I know we used to have it before where you could just select it um, and it would just come up as an embedded link and you could just share that wherever. Uh, so it would be a pretty easy fix. We just need to see it again, like enough feature requests mm -hmm. about it and then 
and then we'll okay. essentially do it. Um, we got a couple yeah. questions here that seem more specific to individual users. So is there a good support channel for people to reach out to for asking specific like logging questions or questions with their accounts? Yeah, if you just go to just our website, you'll see there's like a chat box here, even on your dashboard. So you can just open that up, type your question in. Um, you can also reach out to either Andy or myself. It's just our names at dropler.com. Um, we could probably share those after the webinar. Um, but yeah, you can also write in to hello at dropler.com. Uh, and those are the okay. easiest ways. Awesome. Um, um, those are all the us. main questions that we have. So let's uh, everyone give a big thank you to Andy and Nicole for, for walking us through this. I think this was awesome. Um, and if you guys want to check out the deal, you can go over to the AppSumo store, check out Dropler. It's a great deal that we got running right now for a limited time. So, so get in there, check it out. As always, it comes with a 60-day AppSumo guarantee. So feel free to play around with it. Let us know what you think. Um, Andy and Nicole, do you have any any last words to say to folks before we sign off? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, we really appreciate you guys uh, taking a chance on our, our product, and we're really excited that you guys are using it and, and digging it, if you are. Um, and yeah, all the feedback we get on this kind of stuff is, is just amazing to make sure that we're creating the best product we possibly can. So yeah. awesome. Yeah, we got people in the comments saying Dropler's awesome. I already yeah. bought five. Yeah, we really love that. This is super cool. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Um, for anyone that was, I know there were some issues with the audio, audio quality for some folks. We just switched over to this new webinar platform. So apologies to all of you guys. I will be reaching out to uh, Webinar Ninja to get that taken care of. But in the meantime, I will be uploading this video to YouTube and emailing out the replay to folks later this afternoon. So hopefully there shouldn't be any audio issues there. So apologies about that. But in the meantime, check out Dropler. It's an awesome tool. And uh, Andy and Nicole, thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for no putting problem. it together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys. Thanks, Simulinks, for Bye. joining. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.